The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Brian Caprice from Keep Trading Simple, and welcome to our market update, analyzing potential opportunities in the Nadex markets. Um, great to have you guys back again. Uh, hopefully, many of you were able to attend the Education Summit last week. Um, I know they are just putting the finishing touches on the recordings, breaking everything up into you know, digestible pieces to make it easier for everybody. And I think those are going up on the website in the next day or two, um, maybe a little bit more than that, but I know they've been putting a ton of time into it. So hopefully you were able to get that. Um, again, any feedback that you wanna give those guys, you're more than welcome to type it in the chat or send email in. If it's something that you would like to see again, you know, some type of education format like that over kind of two days, definitely let them know. I know we had a lot of fun putting it together for everybody. And the feedback we've gotten thus far has been absolutely amazing. So again, if you do want more of that, please let them know so we can do it uh, for you guys. Um, it's June. I can't believe it's June already. I think with this um, social distancing and everything we've dealt with in 2020 so far, the year has like flown by. I had asked my wife the other day, it's like, wait, it's June already? W when did we start this thing? W when did we start the stay at home stuff? Was that, you know, was that February? Was that March? Like I couldn't even remember. Like it feels like it's just been so long. So the year is absolutely just flying by. Um, there's all kinds of crazy stuff happening. But something that we're missing, there's a lot of stuff happening in the markets right now. Um, Canada has a, you know, a, a new BOC head. Um, Brexit is back in the, in the news again. And we're talking about hard exits and the pound is just absolutely going crazy. The CAD has been having some crazy movement. The Aussie has been having some crazy movement. The indices are, are approaching areas of all-time highs again. So there's just so much opportunity out there. It's, a, it's, it's absolutely just amazing to see what's going on in the markets right now. Um, with that said, let's just kind of jump in because there's a lot to cover today. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, many of this point do. I feel like a lot of you guys are becoming regulars, and that's great. I love having you guys around. Um, it's especially great because then when I talk about things that we had discussed last week, you can kind of see how they're evolving, and hoping, hopefully that's helping you guys um, you know, learn to read charts and, and set positions a little bit better. Uh, but I've been trading, again, since about the 2000s, seen a lot of different market crashes, a lot of craziness. Started off like many people do, retail trader buying books going to free seminars trying to get free education here and there um there was no youtube back then or youtube is not what it is these days um made all the mistakes in the world so learn really what not to do before i learn what to do um i've been able to kind of weather the storm over the years i uh, found currency trading ended up getting into futures as well um worked for a company with you know helping educate people and i really found kind of really my love as far as educating people how to trade the markets. Um, it was very kind of an interesting kind of full circle things. I was a financial advisor. I worked for one of the big three banks. So I got to see things from an internal kind of angle and view. Um, I am not from a floor trader based family. So I'm not floor trader based. Um, I'm kind of the retail trader turned advisor turned kind of educator. Um, it's kind of what my path has been. Kind of a different path. Uh, and I'm actually happy. And I think that makes me more well-rounded. Um, and again, you'll see it in some of my analysis. Um, I don't use traditional methods. A lot of those methods don't necessarily work. The times have changed. Um, created a number of different courses that are associated with Nadex. Um, the 30 minute trader, five minute binary courses. I have a weekly breakdown that's meant to kind of help people get a view of kind of what's going on in the week in potential areas. Um, created a high volatility trading course in response to COVID-19 and kind of how we have to change our trading based off of extremely high volatility, right? Because we definitely saw extremely high volatility this year. Uh, but it's something that you can use even you know in normal times um, whatever this new normal is going to be um first and foremost though i will say this and i'm going to give my uh, my little one a shout out right now i'm first and foremost a family man father of twins and that little girl she turns two today so uh, i now officially have a two-year-old in the house um and just for the update guys potty training is going awesome uh at two years old so i'm extremely happy we have cake family everything coming in town today but i want to make sure i give her her shout out today because she loves uh, when i talk about her all right, so let's cover the Nadex risk disclaimer before we get into charts. Nadex, uh, trading on Nadex involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Trading can be volatile and investors risk losing the cost of another transaction, including fees. The information presented within this presentation is for information and education purposes only and should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. I want no email saying, well, Brian said, Brian said. If your analysis matches up with what I do, then you're more than welcome to take these trades into your account. But understand, I'm doing these presentations for information and education to teach you guys how to be able to place these when I'm not around. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Nadex contracts are based on underlying asset classes, including Forex, stock index futures, and commodity futures, 
we will cover all three. I'm actually going to start with the stock indexes first today. And then what we'll do is we'll go um, into Forex and then the commodities. Um, interesting setup this week, I think, for oil. Uh, Nadex is a registered trademark of the IG Group. Um, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with that as well. So agenda for today, again, the upcoming news events for the week. Um, it's a very interesting week, the way that things are labeled out. This is a non-farm payroll week. So I expect a lot of fireworks late in the week. Um, important to understand, but I'll break down kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that first. Then I'll break down indices, Forex, then commodities. And then again, remember those Education Summit videos will be um, online next day, two, three days. Uh, but make sure you go and review those. There's a lot of information. Uh, I was one of the speakers, but some of the other speakers that are out there um, gave some really invaluable information. So please make sure you go watch those replays if you haven't already. And if you did, I would still go back and watch them again. There's some really amazing, uh, what I would call golden nuggets in those videos put on by, you know, by Todd, put on by Dan, and then as well as Mark. Uh, make sure you, again, equal love across the board. See those videos, like those videos, follow Nadex channel. It's definitely worth your time, guys, um, without a doubt. I learned a lot from watching the other speakers as well. So please do the same thing. Um, all right, so let's go over and let's look at what the news is, all right? Um, this is kind of a weekly view. And again, it is Tuesday, so we've already had some news in here. So again, I'm using Forex Factory. Daily FX is another great one you can use. I actually use that when we show the oil charts. The scanner right now is telling me, and this was amazing yesterday. I mean, the dollar cat was down 80. The Forex market is literally on fire right now. It is just going crazy, right? The dollar yen, finally, we've had some movement. Uh, for the last two weeks, this has been very, very flat. We've been talking about 12 pips. Now it's finally over 100. Thank God. Pound's been moving. The euro has been kind of moving last week. The euro had a big week. I don't know if anybody got on euro trades last week. The dollar cad yesterday at one point was down like 170 pips in 24 hours. So crazy movement there. Look at this pound yen, 194. If you guys are not even looking at currencies whatsoever, you guys are missing out. There is so much opportunity right now in the currency market. It is just amazing. Um, as far as news goes today, I'll click this so we can kind of get the rest of the week. All the news today was basically Australia-based. Um, anything that's going on in the United States is literally being driven by the media right now. There's no economic news releases that we really need to focus on. Tomorrow, we start with G7 meetings. Now, G7 is not something that there is an economic number that gets re released with it. But a lot of times you will hear people make comments. Um, they'll come out of their meetings and make some type of statement. Um, hopefully, you know, typically through, you know, official channels, right? Um, official news reporting agencies. Uh, when they come out on Twitter, it's kind of like, hmm, is that an aid? Is that someone's opinion? What is that? Is that real? Uh, but again, you tend to see those uh, for G7 meetings. And there will be some type of an outcome for that. Tomorrow at 15 in the morning, we have the non-farm employment change. As you can see, this was an astronomical, huge number, right? Mine is 20 million people lost jobs, right? At that last reading. Now they're expecting to be 9,500. And this is actually already changing. This was 9, uh, 9 million earlier. Now it's up to 9.5. If this number comes in at say 10 million, 15 million, if it's big, and if we miss the top side, this could be like an instant market tanker right away because it's like, oh man, a lot more people have lost jobs than we thought, right? We also have some BOC data coming in, which is pretty interesting. Why? because they have a new chief and they're having their first meeting tomorrow. So a lot of the movement we've seen in the CAD has been kind of kind of a response to what's happening um, up in Canada. Um, again, whenever you get a kind of a new Fed chief in there, policy tends to change, you know, different people, different opinions, kind of sometimes even different movement. Um, and again, we're seeing a lot of Canadian strength. So it, it kind of seems like the market really likes this guy coming in, um, should be pretty interesting. We also have ISM non-manufacturing. Now we did have a bit, um, Monday was kind of a, a bit of a miss on that one. Uh, we're going to get another iteration. It is, a, it is going higher. Now, again, you don't have to know what 44 means, but you can see that it is going higher. And if you click on this, again, you can see that 50 indicates industry, uh, industry expansion. We're not quite at the expansion level, but we are kind of getting back in that direction. But if this comes in as a big miss, again, that could be pretty negative on the market. Okay. We have European data setting in on Thursday, monetary policy, that's important. And again, this is where that big unemployment claim number comes in. Okay, now, as I mentioned last week, the unemployment claims number, I don't I don't think this one is gonna continue to be rising at the same rate that it was. Um, I think a more important figure would be to look at what the continuing claims is, okay? Because people are starting to go back to work. Um, things are starting to open back up again. So there won't be as many claims being obviously, you know, put in, continue when you're back at work, it doesn't work that way. Um, so that will kind of give us a, a kind of a foreshadowing of what's reopening and how many people are actually going back and what's happening with it. Then we had on Friday, 
Friday is nothing but fireworks. Look at this. They we have the Canadian numbers, the unemployment rate for Canada, you know, was a 13. Let's see what that one jumps to. The unemployment change for Canada. All the power that Canada has had this week, right? All, all, all the strength could be sucked out of the market right away. And then 8.30, same time, we have all the U.S. data. Look at this. Going from 14% to 19.5, we were down to 3.6 at one point, right? 3.6. And we were holding that and actually even trying to attempt to go a little bit lower. Could we break 20? We could, right? We absolutely could, without a doubt. Um, pretty interesting. And, and the big question is, how fast can the you know the government whittle that back down again, right? Um, yeah, pretty crazy. And then we have the uh, the non-farm employment trains being down eight mils, what the kind of the prediction is. And again, that number could be a miss, and this could really kind of uh, you know, this could this could really sour, you know, this could really sour some of the uh, the Friday you know kind of momentum. Um, and again, it could potentially lead us into a red weekend, but maybe not. Maybe these numbers are overinflated. Maybe it only comes in at fifteen percent or sixteen percent, and that leads us into a big green Friday across the indices. So again, as you can see, guys, non-farm payroll is pretty exciting. A lot of stuff going on, um, a lot of news. And I, I don't care if you're a stock trader, if you're a futures trader, commodities trader, forex trader. This much news and this much big, high-level kind of data across the world, it's big. Okay, so a lot of trading opportunity for this week um, inside of the news. Now let's go across and look at some of the indices starting right off the bat. So uh, let's go over, start with NQ. So. NQ, I'm going to crank this up to a daily level. So as you guys have, again, we count five days back, you can see the red candle over here. But what I've been talking about is we are very, very high uh, on what I would call the curve. We're getting up to an area where we've seen price slam back down already, right? Last time that price was up here putting in all-time highs, that's where basically COVID stepped in at the end of February and launched just all the way, I mean, just hammered us, right? Well, we've now pushed all the way back. And again, it's kind of hard to see. There's been some, you know, kind of some, there's some um, orders and stuff up here that we, I wanted to talk about. But you can see we're very, very high into an area where we've seen sellers step in. Okay, dropping it down to lower time frames. Okay, you can see that um, there is a level right above where we are. We're technically sitting inside of daily supply, or actually this is weekly right now. Um, yeah, overlay was a bit high, right? You can see right now, we actually just bounce off. And I don't know if you guys can see it here. I'll put a little white in there. Uh, you know, I can zoom in a little bit for you. Maybe you can see it a little bit better there. So we can get this to, uh... there you go. Okay, you can see right here, we actually are sitting inside of what I would call daily supply. Okay, areas where there are sellers, okay, that we've seen sellers in the past. And you can see prices come up, uh, it's done it before. This white zone right here is actually a zone that we talked about last week. Okay, we set this up and say, hey, listen, last time price was here, it was definitely an area where price was what? shot back to the downside and we did we saw price move down okay last week right here on the 29th we saw the week end in that same exact area and what was the response boom all the way back down again okay um all the way back down and again we ended up getting another entry in there so this zone was a zone that again this is why it's important to understand many of you heard me last week talk about price action and the type of trader that i am i'm not using indicators in, in a way that tries to forecast what's about to happen because i don't know but it's an if this then that philosophy and this is what i had same thing we saw here. And again, we ended up in there, boom, slammed down. We came back up, boom, again. Okay, and we hit it again and we started to push back over. But again, after hitting an area three times, you expect to see some type of push through, right? So now where it is, now let me zoom back out again. Okay, this zone from last week, we can take off. It's already been completed, remove it. Again, we don't want to get confused by it. This is kind of what we're staring, you know, staring at right now. Kind of the same idea, right? We are high on the curve. We just bounce off a level. You're seeing price start to turn. And even on the lower time frames, you can see this has been really the response off that level. Now, there's a little bit of a level on the four hour, which was, uh, again, it's it's marked uh, a bit higher. You know, on the four hour, you can see that there's that this red line up top. So we're inside of a, a larger time frame zone. And again, that's why we're seeing downward you know, movement at this point. And again, there's a bit of a zone. And again, right here. And that's, this is the one on the four hour. I'll change this to a uh, red so you guys can see it a little bit better. So for me, and what my thinking is right now on this one is, you know, we're definitely seeing downward pressure. And again, a lot of this is media based. Um, there is some great potential a bit higher on this one later in the week. Okay. And again, on a four hour, you can see it's made attempts and it keeps getting pushed back down again. The big question is how far will this push down? Okay. It's falling right now into an area where we are seeing a bit of a pop, right? I mean, we saw, you know, we saw price. Let me change this back. It's a little bit too bright. Uh, we'll change this back to white because that's the easiest to see. We saw the last time price was here, it left, it tested, and it popped. Okay. Came back down again and has now popped. Now the question is, is this the impulse move or is this a correction move? Are we getting a reversal off this level? 
okay? Now, just so you guys know, what time do I talk about is our typical reversal times, 10.30, 11 o'clock time frame. This one ended up going right into that level around that time frame, right? Um, I could shrink this down and say, hey, listen, here, here's the, the actual pop, right? Here's the actual popping range, right? Price came down, leveled here, went up, hit, popped. Well, this just happened to coincide with, I don't know if you guys can see at the very bottom, look down here, right at the bottom of my chart, you guys can see it? I'll put this timer right there. It hit right at the uh, right at the 11 o'clock time frame. So we talk about reversals a lot of time and what times are the most popular time for reversals? 10, 10.30ish, those are when reversals come in. So you guys can see there was a short-term position in this one um, that we are, you know, not quite at the three to one, but it looks like it's making an attempt to push up that direction. So again, is there opportunity to the top side, even when the market is heading to the downside? Yes, absolutely. Again, this is multiple time frame analysis, something else I mentioned from last week and why it's important. Um, where I see this one going for the week, obviously we don't want to look at 30 minutes. We want to bump it a bit back up again. Um, and again, I'll remove that so we uh, we don't clog these charts up too much. Um, if this area holds, if if it does not continue to push a bit higher, I think price can probably come back down to this 9370 range. It's been a pretty good level. We need something pretty big. Um, I don't think tomorrow that we're going to hear anything about world peace. You know, I don't think world peace is coming instantaneously. The market's going to need something really good to bust through that prior level. Um, and again, this is going for the NQ, the S&P and the, and, the, and the Dow. So I'm doing a little bit more kind of commentating on this one is it's up there. I believe it's in, in, in a type of a short sequence right now. And um, again, there's some there's some areas right above. Now, looking at uh, possible ways to trade this later in the week. So looking at, again, this is the, uh, the NQ. Um, knockouts have been just an amazing way to play this. Okay, looking at where the, the knockouts currently are, Okay, now let me, uh, I'll bring this down a little bit and I'll put some lines here. And remember, my prices, this is ZCN data, so it's about six, it's about six uh, points a bit higher here. But it looks like we have a 96, what do we got here? I'll just change it this way. Looks like we have a touch or a knock, knockout bracket coming in at 96.70. There's your first one. Uh, I'm going to have to drop that on a lower time frame. All right. There was one knockout bracket right where that reversal occurred. Okay, next knockout bracket. And again, if you guys are not doing this, you should absolutely be marking this on every single one of your charts to make sure that you have it. This would be at 9640. Okay, right in there. And again, you guys can see how closely these are, uh, you know, together. So, you know, you may say, hey, listen, where are the opportunities in the knockouts? Here they are. 9610 is right there. And then over here we have. 9580 right right there so interesting knockouts to the top side downside it looks like we're looking at you know again um i had this on most of the charts i didn't get the chance to do it here it looks like we have one the first knockout that we need to worry about being broken on the bottom side is occurring at 9520 oh actually you know what because of my timing it's it's off by a little bit right here uh, not my timing but like because i'm off um Let's see. Oh no, we should be fine. Right there. Yeah, right there. All right, so you guys can see, how about this for a reversal level? Okay, how about that? And again, remember, I'm gonna be slightly off because I'm about six points off, but how about that for a turning point about taking limited risk? Uh, if you guys remember Marcus, uh, Mark's presentation, he talked about getting trades potentially up in the one to 10 range and using knockouts to do it. How about when you have a reversal sitting exactly where you have a turn on a knockout bracket? That's the kind of trades that guys that he was talking about. Those are the type of setups, right? To match your risk versus reward. So again, go back and watch that episode or that 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 um that 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 session. Uh, but again, great little turning point right there. Just mark these off again. Like I said, on an, on the short term bullish, um, in a kind of overall kind of day two swing or longer, I think more bearish in this position. Okay, now jumping the S and P, the S and P is. Not as high. And again, on a daily level, you can see we only made it about 60% of the way back up again. We are not pushing all the way up. That zone doesn't come in so much, much higher. Um, if it was, if this is, you know, the same as the NQ, it would be up at the 33, 33 range. We're not, we're up in like the 33, 70, 33, 60 range. Lower time frame for me, I need this one to be, I, I'm looking for shorts here, but I need price to go just a bit higher, okay? For me up in this 33, 10 range is kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm kind of rooting for the S&P. Um, NQ, I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, I'm bearish, but I'm kind of bullish in the S&P. I want this to go a bit higher. Um, the reason why, and again, on the lower time frames, it's pulling back the same exact way. It had the same exact setup. 
Here's an area of basing with a nice pop out of it. What did it do? It reversed right at the 1030 window as well. Okay, and again, this one actually probably, yeah, this one probably actually, uh, let me see here, let me adjust this. And this one may have actually already hit its three to one to the top side. Um, I believe that this one is, uh, no, it's close. It's real close, right there. Right, you guys can see it's coming in right there at, at about, you know, about that range, about 30, 60, four ish. Okay, it's about to hit, but same same setup, 1030 reversal, um, you know, same same time. Um, I need this one to go higher before I'm looking for a longer term short. A uh, couple ways I'm looking for this one to happen. Um, I'm hoping that with everything going on, I'm hoping there's some type of stimulus or something that comes out that is considered really good for the economy. Obviously, with everything going on, bad unemployment numbers, they need something to kind of help everybody right now, right? I'm hoping that that positivity will bring us back up into this 3110 range. I would like us to be up in this range before the end of the week. Um, I would like to go into Thursday and Friday with some of the big non-farm payroll numbers in that kind of all-time high area. If we have a a bad miss, that would be an ideal like kind of an ideal kind of situation with horrible non-farm numbers. We're sitting right at all-time nine time numbers to have another type of a bounce back to the downside. Now I'm not saying all the way back down to here, but I'm saying wouldn't be a bad little area. And again, not talking the top, talking about these two purple lines here, which are based off four hour gaps. Okay, this is a four hour gap and we mentioned this before. These are mentioned off of a bit of a gap here and it's been tested once, tested a second time and both times had great reactions off of that same level. I'm looking for a repeat situation is what I want in the S&P. Looking at the Dow. So the Dow, oof, kind of the same idea. This one on a daily level, you can see is not as high, right? NQ up top, S&P right here, Dow has been the laggard, right? We've hit this zone once already and it's and it had a great response back. And again, um, we marked this off, um, bring it all the way over here. You guys can see here's the zone, actually it was based off a of four hour. This is the four hour gap. And again, for your, you guys see this right here? The last time price pulled up in this range is when we had that big gap down. This is what it looks like right here, right? When we hit it last week, we pushed back to the downside, stabilized, pushed up and have kind of just flatlined more or less. You guys can see this one actually does have the touch brackets already marked off on there. And again, it's it's hard because they're in this zone. Okay, this one up here at 25,790 is actually sitting inside of a zone. We got pretty close with today. Um, the 26, uh, the 25,690 just missed getting stopped out on that one uh, on an hourly basis. And remember, mine, the price will go above. That's not how a knockout works. It's because, again, this is ECN data that's slightly different than what the uh, indicative value is for Nadex. So it got super close to being stopped. Um, but I believe this one, let me see, let me make sure before I say that, um, that's the 2690. Um, yeah, the 690 is still in the 25, 690. So it was close, but it's not quite there yet. And it's knockout number three, but look at that nice movement to the downside off of that level. I also believe in, again, pull your charts. You know, there's many different ways to do it. You can pull it off Nadex. You can pull it off of trading view. Um, again, if you guys are familiar with the new beta client, the charting is definitely taking a step in the right direction step up you can do all this and again all of your drawings will stay in those charts but as you guys can see up here in the 30 minute the last time price was up in this range we got slammed down once it tried to make an attempt to come back and then took another big slam to the downside so there are two levels of sellers and a touch bracket is sitting right about in that same level i'm sorry a knockout isn't i'm stuck I, I did this last week too guys i somehow i was so good with saying knockouts and then i keep switching back to touch brackets i have no idea why but Knockout brackets are sitting up in that same level. Knockout number three is kind of right in the right range. If you can coincide this with some type of large US-based news, especially with a disappointment, that's a great place to kind of uh, get into a position in my eyes, okay? Now, areas you wanna watch out for, see this little bounce right here, okay? This bounce is approximately around 25,442. That's an area that's probably gonna give us a bit of a hiccup, okay? The reason why is price came up, it based, and then took a nice pop out of it. I do expect buyers to step in in that level. So just be cautious with that one. That one is at the bottom of knockout number 10. Okay, knockout number 10, that's the bottom side of it. And it's actually, again, my charts are slightly off, but you can see it's just below that level. So if you like this, and if price does nothing today and tomorrow morning, we end up sitting in this level right here, right? What I like about this is this level is right above this touch bracket knockout which just happens to be a slightly below the zone which is ideal for me i love those type of setups so tomorrow at 10 10 30 if we have some type of 
reversal kind of looking time frame coming in, this could be a nice little buy tomorrow. Okay, later in the week, I'm looking for shorts probably off that level as well. So that's kind of my near and short term. Switching over the currency market, okay? The Australian dollar is basically, we're gonna call this Tesla or uh, you know SpaceX. Um, this is the Dragon capsule. Look at this thing on a daily. This is exactly, again, this is, this is the space shuttle, right? The, the, the new astronauts up there. It is just on a tear. Impulse and correction moves moving all the way to the top side. It is an absolute just, this is one of those ones. If you've been on this one, you've been riding this one. This is like, uh, you just, great, great movement, okay? There are levels sitting above that I am looking at. There's actually a zone right here, which is kind of hidden, right? It's actually based off of a weekly zone. Weekly zones tend to be good. The last time price was there, it did push back to the downside and it's rather small, especially for a weekly zone. It's only about 25 pips. Um, unfortunately, again, this is not one of the knockout pairs. Um, I know some of the people in the education seminar or the, the education event last week were saying, hey, when are we getting more knockouts? We love these things. And again, if you guys want to see more knockouts in pairs like this, like tell me there's not been some knockout potential in this one. Absolutely. If you want that, email customer support and say, we love knockouts. We want more of them. And then they'll give us what we want. Okay. Um, my vote is ask for Aussie dollar and ask for dollar CAD because both of those have been absolutely explosive as anything in the last week. Absolutely perfect for knockouts. We're getting up into ranges both on a weekly level as well as a daily that this one really matters to me. Okay. Now, as you can see on a four hour basis, we do have a zone just a bit higher. And again, it's going to that weekly zone. It's about 50 pips away. The daily ATR right now is about 89 pips. So it's got about half a day's worth of movement that we're looking for for price to pop up in this range. Remember, when we look at news for the week, where is it? I lost it. I'll bring it up another one. Here we go. When we're looking at news for the week, what do we have tonight? GDP for Australia. Okay. It's expected to go from the positive to the negative. And again, matching news and charts is what I absolutely love to do. If price in the next nine hours can move 50 pips, it has an hourly ATR of 21. So it can it move 50 pips if the ATR is 21 in nine hours? Yes. Okay. So what this means to me is if price is able to continue to rally throughout the day on dollar weakness and Aussie strength, gold strength, right? Price pushes higher. It goes into that level. And then what we have is we had this nine o'clock GDP quarter over quarter, which is, again, go back one quarter. That's where COVID was starting to kick in. There could be some nice trading potential in this one. Again, there are ways to play with this with binaries on the smaller time frames, um, you know, the smaller durations, as well as with call spreads. Love to get this one with knockouts as well. Okay. Now, Aussie Yen is kind of a similar picture. Aussie Yen on the daily is also straight up, right? This is the rocket ship. You know, this was kind of the Thursday, right? We're getting ready to take off. Not the weather's bad. It pulled back. And what did it do? We launched, boom, straight up in the air. Same idea. This thing is rocking. It's coming up into a gap area right now. So I would expect to see some type of a pullback. We haven't actually seen it yet. Um, but this thing has just been rocking. This is on the daily. You can see we have a bit more to go on this one. We approached the weekly zone at, in 63 pips and we approached the daily in 131. So this one looks like it'll have a little bit harder for an opportunity to get up that high. There's nothing. We can't, I mean, it's just, it's just been straight up. There's nothing slowing this one down right now. Um, I think overall, you know, of the two setups, no, not that one, um, of the two setups, um, I really think that the Aussie dollar right now is presenting a little bit better uh, of a setup. Uh, but for me, this one at 76.10 kind of is where I'm looking for shorts. Um, not to say that it can't get up there before tonight, but I think that's, um, I, I think it, it may be a little bit more of a, a tomorrow morning thing. Now, also, yen can play, be played a little bit differently as well. Now, again, if we cannot get up there today for this one, look into tomorrow morning. And what do we have? We have a big number tomorrow morning. And remember, for those of you that do follow currencies, also yen, again, yen fluctuates with the overall stock market. So if we can't get it for Aussie news tonight, if price does rally up tonight because of the Aussie news or lack of news tonight, maybe, if we're sitting up here tomorrow before the US-based news, when the US news goes off tomorrow for non-farm uh, non employment change, that will affect the overall stock market, the Dow, which directly affects what the yen does. That could be the catalyst we need for this to turn. So again, could be a potential short here tomorrow morning if we don't get it tonight as well. Um, as far as shorting right now, I don't really have a whole lot in here. I would need to do like a failure to go higher to, you know, to really change much from there. All right. Now your yen, your yen is rocking as well. Kind of the same thing. I mean, we're seeing this on many different pairs right now. Remember last week, you know, we did have a setup position that we were saying, hey, listen, if, if, price can break below this level, we're looking to take shorts. Well, we mentioned this, if it does it, 
it didn't do it. So no harm, no foul, no trade, no losses, no nothing. Price has just continued to push away. So we're still going to continue to hold this level down here for when it does, because eventually price will come back. But right now, it's not as big of a concern because price is pretty far away, right? Price has gone crazy up top. And again, this is not euro-based because the euro is having all kinds of problems right now. This is yen-based because of the overall stock market. Price is rallying. And as you can see, we have a zone coming in here just above as well. Whoops. It, only, it helps when you click the actual target. There we go. You guys can see that we have a zone coming in here at 121.94-ish. Really the 129, probably 122 range is probably what we're looking for, that 122 range. Um, it's a nice round number. Price typically gets sucked in. The human brain likes things that end in zero, zero, or five, zero. You know, anything that ends in zero is great. Kind of the same scenario, right? Um, as the last one, we need about 46 pips to do that. Um, on the four hour, it's about 40. So in the next four hours, eight hours, it could get up there. An interesting way to play this one would be, again, with the G7 meetings tomorrow, hard Brexit talk. Um, it's not necessarily a setup today. I think this one is probably set up more in the overnight. So if you're a West Coaster or you're in another country, this could more coincide with the probably the Euro Open tomorrow. Um, I feel like by the time that this will finally get up here, being 1230 right now, it'll be late in the day and we'll stop getting as much kind of Dow kind of control over the, uh, the, over the yen um, for this one to kind of turn. It doesn't mean we can't take it, um, but I don't think it'll be as explosive, explosive as a move as if it was coinciding with some, um, some data. So I, I'm thinking because again, the European Open, it will, you know, that will be kind of a, a much bigger mover. Um, I think this may be kind of a middle of the night trade. Again, you can set and forget Nadex. It's one of those things, you know, if price is able to get up to there even late before you go to bed, you could, you know, you could even put a, a limit order in, um, basically saying, if here's what the risk is, I'll step into it, knowing that if you place that trade, the most you can lose is whatever it costs you to get into the trade plus the fee, right? Um, depending on the number of contracts. Uh, and that's it. So again, you could set a limit trade for this area as well if it's getting a little bit late in your time, okay? Now the pound. Pound has been on fire. Now this is not only a yen based move, but this is also a pound based move, okay? As you can see right now on the four hour, we are sitting up inside of a zone right here, okay? We started the zone here and the zone on the other side is, whoops, kind of pushing up. Now this is a lot of movement. You may say, why the heck is the pound moving? I've heard nothing but bad news. And you're right, you're right. If you look at the pound, all you're seeing over here is things about Brexit, you know, Brexit fears are still a pressure factor. Um, down here, you're talking about it. Um, where is it? I just saw it a little while ago. Um, talking about a hard, a hard exit with Brexit. Um, 100 day moving average, strong rally. Um, no deal Brexit threat looms over pandemic, ravaged UK economy. All this is bad data, but yet why are we seeing so much strength? Look at this, 220 pips in, in, in 24 hours. This is a monster move. Again, a lot of this is because the market is actually okay with a hard Brexit. Right now, with Europe being as messed up as it is, the articles and things like that we are seeing in the news right now is the economy in Europe is not getting better. Even It's actually getting worse with businesses opening because of expenses and fees, right? Think about it. If you have a business and you're you know, only allowing outdoor dining, but 90% of your actual tables are inside, how many people are you employing to have that server, have the cook, have the hostess, have the manager, have somebody running the payroll. They're cost of things. If you're only running at 10% or 25% occupancy, it may not make sense, right? But people are opening because they need to. That's what Europe is experiencing right now. And again, I think it's something that we'll see here as well. This pound has been on a mission, but whenever we see huge moves, kind of like all of right here, the response tends to be a retracement, right? A reversal, right? Well, we are starting now to get up into these four hour reversal levels that tend to be pretty nice little levels, okay? Um, on an hourly, we don't really have a whole lot up here, unfortunately. It'd be nice to kind of lower our risk on this one. And again, we can look back and I'll see, what do we have here? Yeah, there's a small level sitting right here. Um, we can see that there's a zone here and a zone here. And again, I'll mark these off with white lines just so it's a little bit easier for us to see. And again, that's a good zone, right? Um, it's been hit here. And then there's another zone up there, which is not bad. And again, these are on the hourly basis, right? Um, there's a small one right here, but this may be a bit aggressive. Um, so there's kind of where the safety one. So like I said, we're in a zone right now. Um, but again, it's based off a four hour zone and it's about 88 pips, which I'm not taking an 88 pip risk on this. It doesn't, you know, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, but oops, let me uh, control Z that one and uh, click that one off. 
I do look at, I am going to be looking at this zone right here though. Okay, now that zone is going to be blocked off by 137 and 137.64, okay? Um, that could give us uh, some interesting potential, right? Nope, not that. I want, I want this guy. Oh, it's not going to let me. I'm just trying to get this out of the way. Hold on. One sec. Bring that back up. There's the zone. Let me pull this and right along those lines. So, yeah, that's not a bad place for the one to three. That could be a pretty interesting target, doing something along those lines, taking a bounce and, um, you know, running it from, whoops, running it from there down. Nope. Rectangle properties. Let's turn this one green. And let's turn this one red, or we'll turn it pink. Something along those lines. And again, these are just rough drawings, guys, in, in the, the essence of time. But um, something along those lines, that could not be, wouldn't be bad. Uh, actually, this would be a bit higher. Hold on. Um, it would be here. So it would be like that. That's perfect. That's right before the big bounce. So yeah, yeah. So that's pound yen, okay? Coming up in that 137.34 range, 137.64 range uh, for a potential short. Uh, looking at pound dollar. So pound dollar, obviously, this is a, a knockout base pair. Uh, you can see, again, we're kind of having some sideways movement. We are approaching a, a bit of a zone. The analysis is more or less the same. Um, it's kind of what I just drew as well. There's a zone sitting up here at approximately, what is it, 126.27. There is a knockout bracket with a ceiling. And again, let me just verify that this is still good. It should still be. Um, I was like to double check before I go ahead and say everything. I'm at 126.41. Yes, it's knockout number six. So we have a knockout ceiling sitting right at the top of a zone based off of a four hour level. It's inside of a four, but it's refined on a one hour level. I like that for a short end with everything going on with hard Brexit after this big push, that could be an interesting opportunity. Now, this will move based off of pound news, but also off of dollar or US news, right? So it needs to kind of rally up about 73 pips. It has a daily ATR of about 111. So it's less than one day's worth of movement that we need to get up to that level. Um, that could kick in tomorrow morning with the London Open. Obviously, uh, again, London news is a big session for currency trading. This one could also coincide with tomorrow's unemployment data, right? the same type of data that we're seeing down here, right? On Wednesday, we get the non-farm employment change. It could be the ISM manufacturing number that could set it off. So there's multiple things that could be setting off plus a G7 meetings. Again, four hour level, one hour refinement. I like the risk to reward. I think it's in a good place. The one to five may be a little bit far. And I love the fact that there is a knockout sitting at the very upper kind of 90 percent tile frame at the very, very top. Those are typically great ways for you guys to limit risk, but still have you know some nice trading potential. And again, if you need more, you know, if, if you want to polish up on knockouts, there was a couple different presentations on knockouts last week. All right. Um, looking across at the euro pound. So euro pound is finally starting to see this. So we had a level over here. And what we were doing is we were looking for a break below this level and kind of a continuation pattern. It looks like it's been sucked in. And you guys can see we bounced here. We bounced here. We finally pushed through and came back. But it really didn't spend much time. It was literally on, on the one hour. I think it's actually even faster than that. Yeah, you guys can see. It literally spiked back down when it broke, it came right back up again. So it didn't really give us much of a pause whatsoever below. Typically, we like to have a little bit of a pause below to make sure that it wasn't just a stop run. And this just turned out to be a stop run. Um, had you taken a trade like this, a breakout to the downside, you were at about one to one and a half to one movement into profit. Had you taken it as a, as a, as a really a break of the level, it doesn't kind of meet the Harry Potter trade that I talk about a lot of times, guys. But Again, had you taken that one, we're in the same level, in the same range. Nothing's really changed on this one. I would still use that same exact level for some type of break lower. Um, that's kind of where we're at. Nothing on this one. Like I said, I, I prefer the, the the pound pairs right now to the euro pound. Um, this is kind of a weird one because most of the movement in the pound right now is Brexit based, which is this guy leaving this guy, right? So it's kind of a hard, kind of one of those hard things. Um, now I'm going to remove this white. I'm actually going to move it up here. There is a bit of a level and it looks like price wants to make another attempt for the downside. So I still believe there is a short position in here. And remember, when we talked about this last week, the goal was to get through the short and down to this 86.46 before the weekend. That obviously didn't happen, right? That didn't happen, whoops. But now 
what I would say is we have something along these lines of, hey, listen, there's a potential short sitting up here. Last time price was here, base sideways, and then boom, it's been respected, respected, and we're kind of at that level right now. Um, that would be kind of interesting play um, right now. And again, the one to three is good. The one to five is actually fine as well. Um, that target would be kind of sitting over there. Um, I would I would rate this one as probably a B. This is something a little bit more aggressive. Being that it's almost one o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time, you know, 20 minutes before, the probabilities are not as good as if this was earlier in the morning. Um, I'd love this one for a European open or even a US open. Um, but again, with the European markets closed now, it's going to be a slower moving pair. Uh, so just, you know, just be, just be cognizant of that. Um, again, a little bit more aggressive uh, for you conservative types. Um, I think, I think more of the movements are in the pound. Now the Euro dollar pair as well, this one's been flying, right? This one has been flying. Um, let's see. On a daily basis as well, you guys can see last week, this was just straight up, right? Finally broke out of that level. There's all kinds of things going on on this one. Now this one, I was trying to mess with these beforehand and I ran out of time. So let's make sure we are still good here. Uh, let's see. Top one should be, let's see, we got one, 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 three. Next one is one dot ten sixty three for the euro. Next one down, we have one ten thirteen, and then we have one, one twelve thirteen. It up, oh, sorry, I did that wrong. 10963. There we go. All right, so you can guys see where the, cu the current touch brackets are. So I was looking for a position here. Um, this is one of those ones that we get stuck in break even where a price came up and basically went a one to one away. So, you know, obviously everything going in the United States, that's a driving factor in this one right now. Okay. On a four hour basis, we kind of have a little bit of clear sailing to the top side, meaning that I can, can see continued dollar weakness in this pair. I'm continuing to push higher. We don't really have a lot of people stepping in, at least on a four hour basis until we get up into this 113 range. We got a bit of room to run on that one, right? On an hourly basis, you can see if we go back here, and we'll put a line to show kind of where current price is in that range. Looking back, you guys can see that it's been a while, right? It's been a while since price was there. And we got a lot of kind of muddled kind of price action. Got a little spike here, got a little piece here, a little pullback. And again, this was a pretty healthy impulse correction phase, right? You know, impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse correction. So pretty, pretty okay phase to the downside. There's a few levels in here. I mean, there's one sitting, you know, right here, right? You know, the, oops, not that. I don't know why I hit that one. Hold on. Um, here to here, right? Last time price was here, it popped at base. It came up and retested, 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 and kind of pushed. So there's a little bit of a zone there. That's okay. Um, there's another one sitting kind of, it's hard because there's many aggressive entries in this one. You know, there's one sitting right here. Um, those are probably the closest to, and, and that's kind of what we're bouncing off of right now. Um, I don't know if that, if that level is going to hold or not. Like I said, it's been tested once. Uh, we have some stabilization here with the date, with the European market closed. And again, being as late in the day as possible in this one, I think the better opportunity for this one would be to wait for the, not only the, whether the European open or see what the G7 or US news tomorrow morning looks like. Um, the Euro dollar is one of those, um, one of the ones that we have a lot of different options. We have knockouts, call spreads, binaries. We go into five minutes. We get very, very small um, kind of strike differentials in that small ones. I, I think that's really kind of the way to play this one is gonna be tomorrow morning for news or late week in the news. Um, as you guys can see, look at the, look at the spike off this one. Uh, that occurred, yeah, this was all three o'clock this morning. This was the European Open. This this three this three pip move or this three uh, about sixty pips worth of movement in an hour and a half at the European Open. So you can see what type of kind of drive that market has. Um, eh, I don't really like this one as much. Um, again, we're still middle of the road. I think the pound is still the, the, the place to play this one. Uh, intraday there'll be some moves, but I think the pound would be a better way. So dollar cad, you can see dollar cad is collapsing. So we've had many different trade setups on this one. Okay. This white area right here, right? This is a this is a trade that we had set up from last week. Remember we talked about this? I don't remember. Remember, we had a zone before that we, hey, listen, we wanted the breakthrough, we wanted to go, and that has completed, right? That's all the way through. This white zone, we talked about it last week. And what I said was, hey, listen, we've hit this zone many times. We hit it here, we hit it here, we hit it here. We hit it here, we're looking for a break, right? There was your risk level. So what did it do? It broke, it came through, it broke, it gave us that pause lower. And again, I'll do it on the 30 minute, you guys can see the pause, right? Came back down, we got a little space, came up, went through, 
boom, collapse, boom, collapse. So this was actually one of the opportunities that we talked about that we've had an area where we've had buyers for such a long period of time, but those buyers have been tested many, many times. Nice bounce here, boom, 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 boom. They've saved it way too many times. They can't hold and that's the collapse that we had. So I do think, and again, this trade is done, so I'm going to delete it off the charts because we don't want to, you know, we don't want the charts to be um, really, really kind of just, you know, cluttered, right? That zone, the reaction that it had up there, I think is valid for one more short, okay? That short is coming in at approximately 137.08. Um, actually, 137, it's a little bit higher. It's coming in at um, 137.15 is where it's coming in at. Um, I think that's valid for another entry. Looking at where this could potentially stop or bounce off of, you can see that we do have some levels down here on the four hour at least. Um, down here at 134.07 ish range. So I think this one still has some more room to the run to the downside. Um, tomorrow we have that overnight, the overnight hike and the BOC rate statement. It is not expected to cut whatsoever. It looks like they are holding it, which would provide CAD some more strength, which would continue to push this to the downside. I think the way, the, the way to play this one is if we continue to see this weakness, which I think we will continue to see a bit more, if we can be down to this 134 level tomorrow morning, that could be where we're looking to take longs off of before the news. Um, and again, I don't, I think there's plenty in there. Um, I don't know if we'll get the ADP non-farm miss, but I feel like if we get a miss, I feel like we will have a bounce because people are so negative on the dollar right now that it'll do the exact opposite of what we think. Um, again, typically when you have everybody being so negative, that's when the price tends to go up in the air, right? Because nobody's dumb enough to sell it. So um, everybody's holding what they have. So I think that's the setup. Uh, again, the two things that I'm looking for is, um, one would be the kind of run down to this level, right? Um, I'd be looking at placing kind of buys at this level. And again, that is based off a four hour level. I'll change this to green so it's not super confusing. And here would be the other side of this equation, which I'd be looking to, uh, you know, put in some cells, okay? So that is kind of my analysis right now on the CAD. Sell, buy, not really doing much in the middle, okay? Dollar again, finally, finally, finally some movement. So this thing has just taken forever, as you guys can see here on a four hour basis. It has just been stuck, 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 stuck. We we're waiting for entry off of this zone. And again, finally broke through. Here was one test, two tests, three tests, four tests gave us the entry and the target from last week, or from uh, last week. And since that time, we've just been kind of stuck in this sideways movement. All right, so let me clean the chart up a little bit, remove these so we can see a bit more and drop it down. So right now you can see that we really don't have tons to the left on the daily, or I'm sorry, on the four hour. And the reason why is this, here's where current price is, look to the left. This was kind of that umbrella kind of covering fall. There wasn't really a whole lot of explosive movement. So really on the daily is where we're trying to get most of our information for right now, because that's providing the cleanest opportunity but it's kind of in a weird area, right? It's kind of like, well, what is this? What is what is this? This is kind of a turn. There's a little hidden zone sitting right here, okay? It's right up around that 109.20 area. So that's kind of what I'm looking for as far as where I'd be looking for shorts. It's hard to see right here on this lower time frame, okay? Because right now we're at the 108 kind of 70-ish range. You can see it's got some more room to run. There's really no levels down here on the 30. I think we can see it on the hourly. Yeah, you can, you can see it. it's up in that range. I wanted to push a little bit more. I want to use a little bit higher of a time frame zone. Um, I am expecting a retrace on this one. I'm hoping though, hoping we can get a little bit more kind of bullish sentiment in this one before the reversal because I, I, I'd much rather sell it up here than sell it kind of over here. Um, I just think that that's a safer place. I do believe the price is gonna come back down and, and try to get back into this 108 or four range. Um, I do think this is a target for me back down, probably, uh, actually probably a bit lower now that it's burst through that range. Again, um, I'm looking for price to come right back down to this level, right? Uh, the 107.77 range. Um, don't know if it'll be today, but I do think that we are destined to come back down to that level. I would like this again. I am rooting. I am a bull right now. I have my my bull pom poms right now. I do want it to come back up to this 109.20, and I think that's going to be the better opportunity to get some shorts. Cleaner, cleaner, a um, little bit less risky uh, as far as what the analysis looks like. Not money value, but um, I, I think that prevent you know provides better opportunity. It is a bit a little bit you know a little bit higher. We are talking about 60 pips. It has been very very flat, um, but with being a non-farm payroll week. I am holding out hope for us, uh, you know, shorts up in this range and buys down here at 107.77, okay? Dollar Swiss, so Dollar Swiss. 
Dollar Swiss, I, I marked it off last week. We talked about a potential kind of aggressive entry, and we ended up getting that aggressive entry and then up falling much beyond our profit target. And again, that's going to happen sometimes. Um, again, that was a follow up from what we discussed last week. Right now, I'm kind of using that same level. I really like the reaction off of that level. Um, we had this obviously the higher time frame level here. But I think if we can get price back up in the 9706 range, I think there's a pretty nice short in that range. I love the, the the price action off of it. I love the really long extended range body candle. I think that's a great level. I also like this one down here at 9529. Now, I have a problem with the knockouts on this one. Okay, the knockouts for the dollar Swiss are in really funky positions. They're ending in 19 and 69. Those are not psychological levels for our brain to look at. <laughs> so as you can see, the knockouts are kind of in strange places. There's one up top here, the 9719 is, it's okay. It's only about 60% of the way through the level. There's a little bit more risk above it that we could, you know, you could get stopped out on that knockout and then it turns right after we got kind of taken out of it. The long for this one, I don't really love as well. So this is gonna be one you're gonna have to use binaries, not knockouts on that one. Um, if I have any feedback on them, for me, I believe this one, you know, you shouldn't be ending at 19, you should be ending at, you know, something like this, you, zeros or 25, something that is an actual psychological level for the brain. Um, and if that was the case, uh, these two would have matched up pretty well, because you can see here it's, you know, 95, 20, this is at 29 on the top, 25 is sitting right here, which is the very, very top of that zone. And then the bottom side you guys can see here is where? 95, basically double zero right there, that's the bottom of the zone. So you see how a lot of zones also match up to psychological levels the brain likes? If we get that one changed, that would be awesome. <laughs> but again, we have other options. You know, there are binaries with this one as well, but I think up top 97.06 and then 95.05. Now gold, okay, that was the last currency pair. Let's jump across the gold. Woo, look at this one. Again, I was rooting for gold. I had my my, my bull, you know, pom-poms on. It just didn't get up that high. Uh, as you guys can see, there was some opportunity up here. Uh, there's some minor levels, and again, this one has just been tanking to the downside. And everyone's like, wait a second, why, why is this all happening? Uh, again, this is, um, again, gold is an inflation hedge. No one's looking at inflation right now. It's just not on the radar. Um, you know, there was a zone put in right here that you guys could have traded. Uh, again, last time price was here, it shot down. It came back and retested that level, shot down, was tested, tested again. Again, this was number four, but actually this is number three of the actual touch of the level. Uh, and again, nice kind of push to the downside right? Coincide that with a 30 minute level. And again, this actually gets shrunk a bit on the 30 minute to there. No, right there. Uh, sometimes I really dislike the snap functions. Right there. And this adjusts to there. And you guys can see, let's do the time. You guys can see that this one turned at 10 o'clock. I don't know if you guys can look, look down here on the bottom. I don't know if it's too small for you guys to see, but when did it leave that zone? At 10 o'clock this morning. So again, Another example of a 10 o'clock trade setup coming into a 30 minute zone. Again, we had, had been bull, you know, bearish, bearish, I'm sorry, bullish, 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 bullish all overnight, overnight. Market opens here at 930. It's holding here in this level, 10 o'clock. What does it do? 1030, it leaves the level and crashes all the way down way past the one to five. Okay. Um, I think this probably has a little bit more room to run to the downside. Um, I, it, it, you know, by one o'clock in the afternoon, again, I'm not looking at gold trades anymore. This is really a morning play for me more than anything else. And there's been so many setups in that early morning hours, particularly around the 10 to 10.30 time window. Now, be a bit cautious with this one if you're looking to trade this one tomorrow morning, okay? With rate statements and ISM, we will probably have some movement, okay? Uh, and again, it starts early. Tomorrow, the kind of reversal, again, one thing, 815 is this non-farm number. This is this is going to be or this is a non-farm employment chain. Big number, right? Last time it was 20 million jobs. So today we didn't have an 815 number, and you can see the reaction. Slow, 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 and then it moved. 815, this one could be moving early tomorrow. So keep that in your radar if you guys are going to be trading gold. Silver, silver had the same exact thing. This thing moved at 1030, came all the way back down again. It jumped over the gap. And I mentioned last night to my guys, that's why I had this one marked off as white. That hey, listen, we're we got to look out for this level. Um you know, you have to respect the gap. That's There was a big imbalance in price there. And when it hit that level, it did take a small bounce before coming back down again. It then ended up using this lower zone as an actual kind of takeoff point. So the 1786 is kind of where we're at. Um, of the two, I would say this one actually is in a little bit more of a bullish position right now. Um, I don't think this one, because it's kind of in a level where there's a whole bunch, of, you know, right, price level right now where there's, you know, demand zone, demand zone, demand zone. 
I feel like this one is going to be a little bit more resilient. If we do have kind of a return to a bullish kind of sentiment inside of this, uh, inside of the, the metals, I feel like this one has some room that it could, you know, kind of put in a little bit of a bounce in. Now, if we're unable to kind of break through this white zone, though, um, I do feel that we do have to be looking for continuation trades to the downside. Um, there's a couple of ways you could use the white one. We can use the the, the, the green one as well. That's a defined level. I, I don't like the zone. I don't love that zone, but we could be looking at something along these lines. Uh, and again, I marked this off last week. If, if price bounces off this level, hey, no harm, no foul. Price never got back into that level. You're fine. But we could be looking at something like this for silver in, in the coming days. Okay. Uh, and I, again, I'll mark this off, leave it there, and we can see how it kind of unfolds. And the reason why is we had nice buying here, led to a gap. If it's unable to hold, if we do not get the continuation of the top side, and again, those, those sellers are stepping in strong, there's really nothing until we get back into this range here, which just happens to coincide with the one to three to the downside. Taking this thing from about 1771 down to 1746, okay? Now, last but not least, everybody loves this guy, okay? Um, let me bring this across. Okay. So oil. Okay. So last night I was putting some oil, um, knockouts on there as well. Uh, and again, I don't do as many of these crude ones. It looks like we should have had a break. It looks like we shouldn't have the, uh, the 3650 should be gone. And yes, the 3650 is gone. So this one has now moved up to uh, 40, 50 right there. And that should also mean that this guy has gone down here at 31. And yes, it is. Now we have a 3550 put in, which is right there. All right. So this is the zone I talked about not being able to really go through. I was like, hey, listen, I kind of like this area for short if price doesn't do much. And, you know, kind of is, again, areas of sellers have now become an area of buyers to the top side. Um, we pushed through this level. That's great. It's kind of cleared some stuff off of the plate. Um, Again, yeah, going into oil inventory reports, it, this will be interesting to see what it does over the next few hours and into the morning. Um, I want to see where oil positions itself. Right now, obviously, based off where the knockouts are, we just took one out. We're literally, you know, we're right there, right? Price is literally just taking it out. The, let's see, yeah, the 36.50 is gone. We had one that was right there. Um, now we're kind of smack dead in the middle of two. Okay, so it's kind of an awkward situation. There's not necessarily a great knockout setup in this one. Looking back, at least on the hourly, right, going back to where price was before in this zone, um, let's see, we're kind of up in this gap zone right now, right? We've cleared the gap. So unfortunately, a lot of analysis is going to be difficult because we had this drop all the way down. Again, it's because of the, the May contract. So we're in kind of like new territory. Okay, so really how I would play this one right now is I think the best kind of prudent route would be Let's see what it does for the rest of this afternoon. Let's see what it does in the overnight. Uh, inventory reports tomorrow will be at 10.30 in the morning. Okay. Um, whoops. You guys can pull this one off. And again, to find that one, it's, it's considered a yellow release here. Apply the filter. Uh, you guys can see that's Tuesday, Wednesday at 10.30. Here's your crude oil inventories. Right now, they're not giving us a forecast. But remember, previously, we're at 7.9 mil, right? This one's been... Uh, Slightly off, but last week we saw a big jump. We actually didn't get the drop that we thought we were going to get. Again, they were they were missing, right? And then bam, this kicked in. So kind of an interesting oil setup. So that's why I feel like we need to see what it's going to do. Let's see if it puts in kind of a high in the overnight and then starts pulling back. That could give us a potential short tomorrow. Or again, if we have a reversal, there may be some long setting up. So um, unfortunately, that's what we've got to do. Oil is really analysis morning up. We don't really have a big level right now because we are stuck inside of the May contract drop. Uh, one is when it ran all the way down to zero. All right. So guys, that is the last of the chart analysis for today. Um, again, mark your calendars for next week, same time at 12 p.m. Eastern. Please also give us your feedback. Let us know if you guys liked that education seminar. If you did uh, last week, the education summit, we will go ahead and put more of them in. Um, let me see if there's any question. Um, KM, this, the software that I'm using right now, this is just MT4. It's not really, a, this is nothing advanced. It's a free, it's basically free everywhere. It's mostly for currencies. Uh, but this, this individual broker has uh, commodities as well as futures up there as well. Uh, commodities as well as um, the indexes. Um, where do you get those level from? And when you do this, the last couple of Nadex webinars we place posted. John, are you talking about where I'm drawing? Like the, um, the boxes? The boxes just come from a supply and demand indicator that I have. That's all. Um, it's, you heard me talk last week about what is price action. 
Um, price action for me is finding areas of supply and demand. Uh, it's different than support and resistance. And those are just levels drawn of uh, supply and demand is all, is all they are. All right. All right, guys, with that being said, it's one o'clock. I am out of here. You guys have a great trading week. Remember, lots going on. Don't forget to make, you know, go over and look at your news releases for the week. There's going to be many of them, and they are all the top highest impact moves, all the non farms uh, and everything we have going on with, you know, the peaceful protests and everything else. Make sure you keep an eye on these things. All right. Trade safe, and I will see you guys next week. Take care.